morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure uh, to be here. Um, thank you in particular for those uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, Asia who are going to be spending the night listening to us. Uh, but thank for all of you for your interest uh, in, uh, uh, in pharmaceutical quality and for uh, attending this conference. Um, if you're here, hopefully, you recognize the importance of pharmaceutical quality. Certainly, pharmaceutical quality is really at the center of ensuring that uh, drugs on the market are, are safe and effective. And we all know and have seen, regardless of whether we're coming from industry or from a regulatory agency or um, other areas of the private sector, that when quality goes wrong, a lot of things can go wrong. And so when quality goes wrong, we can have recalls uh, with significant impact on patients. We can have drug shortages. We know that about 60% of drug shortages are actually due to poor quality. And ultimately, poor pharmaceutical quality can have an impact on access uh, to, to drugs. And access has been a very, very uh, uh, debated topic recently. And uh, all of you, I'm sure, have seen uh, the ongoing dialogue about drug pricing and, and how we may make sure that we enhance competition and we increase access to, uh, to medicines. Um, along with increasing access, we also have to make sure that we keep our eye on the ball when it comes to pharmaceutical quality. And increasing access doesn't mean a trade-off against quality. So over the next uh, few minutes uh, during this presentation, I'm planning to give you a brief overview of CEDAR's pharmaceutical quality program, which entails more than one office or more than one approach to ensure quality, as you will see. And we'll also uh, introduce uh, the, uh, the tools that we use to, to regulate uh, pharmaceutical quality. When we look at pharmaceutical quality, um, we have to um, first and foremost understand that uh, pharmaceutical quality is all about a uh, host of multimodal approaches to, to regulating drug quality and ensuring quality. And this is particularly important for those of you who are coming in from industry. Um, the, from the industry perspective, uh, it's easy to focus a lot on inspections on the assessment of the application. But you can, you can see from the slide, there's a lot more to regulating quality. Uh, there is engagement and outreach to uh, all of the stakeholders, the many stakeholders that um, FDA has. There's engagement and outreach with facilities. And I'll speak about this a little bit more later on. There is ongoing surveillance. Uh, of adverse event, of pro product uh, quality complaints, and, and of facilities. Um, there is a lot of work when it comes to policy. And I will speak a little bit later about the work that CEDAR is doing in evolving the regulatory framework so that it becomes more ab adaptable to the techno technological changes that are happening around us. Um, and there is a research um, which is uh, very much at the core of uh, advancing innovation in, in technology. And so over the next couple of days, you will be uh, hearing about how these tools are applied to a number of key areas around pharmaceutical quality. You will be hearing about manu manufacturing and quality assessment of applications. You will be hearing about the uh, surveillance of quality and the maintenance of quality after approval. Uh, we'll talk, uh, you'll, uh, you'll hear a lot about emerging technologies and what FDA is doing in this space. And you will also be hearing about happenings in biological, bi biologics, including biosimilars. And I know a topic, topic that is uh, um, very, um, uh, very top of mind these days, which is the transition of some products from being regulated as drugs to being regulated as biosimilars, including insulins. So when it comes to uh, pharmaceutical quality, uh, FDA and CEDA recognize that partnership is uh, very much at the core of this. And so everybody has to do their bit. Um, and so when it comes to CEDA, we are um, you know, very committed to advancing 
a, a number of modernization uh, and innovation initiatives, um, including the modernization of our new drug review program, uh, investing in IT solutions and tools, improving how we do inspections and evolving how we do inspections, spurring industry innovation uh, by facilitating the adoption of uh, emerging technologies, and last but not least, encouraging uh, the uh, uh, establishment of strong quality culture and uh, evolving uh, the, uh, um, uh, the pharmaceutical quality to a uh, quality management maturity uh, framework. So I'm going to talk to you about a few of these initiatives. We won't have time to cover them all, but I want to highlight a few things in a, a, a handful of these initiatives. Uh, first, I want to touch on the modernization of the new drug review program. This initiative has been going on for a number of years, and uh, you may have seen recently that we have formally announced the uh, um, rollout of this uh, um, new uh, um, uh, organizational alignment for the Office of New Drugs. But this, this initiative obviously goes well beyond the Office of New Drugs because the Office of New Drugs are not the only office that are uh, part of the new drug regulatory program. So the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality is very much at the center of this modernization initiative, as is the Office of, uh, um, uh, of, uh, um, uh, of, of Biostatistics. Um, when it comes to the um, core element of this uh, uh, modernization initiatives, um, we want to move to a greater alignment of uh, our divisions and our review teams uh, and assessment team to, um, a, uh, to uh, therapeutic areas. So we want to move from a functional alignment to a therapeutic area alignment. Um, one of the uh, key elements is also uh, the centralization of project management to ensure greater quality and consistency uh, for sponsors and, and stakeholders. Um, we're moving towards a multidisciplinary approach to the assessment and of the BLA and the NDA rather than having a discipline-based uh, uh, approach where then there is a lot of effort at the uh, 11th hour and 59 minutes to sort of pull it all together. Um, and we're also moving to the adoption of standardized uh, tools and templates such as uh, um, the 30-day uh, IND review. CEDAR is also making a major push when it comes to adoption of, of new technologies. And in this, we have actually been uh, uh, receiving a lot of support from uh, Congress. Um, in uh, 2019, we received uh, uh, approximately $80 million towards uh, uh, technology initiatives that we are utilizing to advance um, uh, some uh, modernization in uh, uh, our two major review programs, both the uh, new drug review program and the generic uh, uh, drug review program. We have done a lot of work to um, uh, organize uh, the work, the, uh, uh, our technology uh, capabilities around the four core, a core areas um, where we are going to be really putting a lot of focus over the next uh, two to three years. Um, the first area is the assessment of the application. Uh, we're also um, uh, putting a lot of emphasis on uh, improving um, knowledge management and adopting tools that would allow us to more efficiently and effectively manage the very vast amount of information that we uh, receive and that we have accumulated um, uh, for uh, over the decades. Um, we are um, also investing in modernizing uh, how uh, we uh, um, do uh, safety signal management, and we're investing in workflow management uh, applications and, and platforms that would allow us to uh, more effectively uh, execute uh, a safety signal management uh, and, uh, and evaluation. And uh, we are making major push in uh, uh, digitizing workflows, uh, including introduction of automation moving away from you know, physically moving dossiers from one office to the other to uh, creating collaborative uh, platforms that enable the review team to uh, um, really collaborate in real time and see what's going on in the application um, in real time. So stay tuned because this is an area that where we'll be doing a lot of work, as I said, in the, past few, in the next few years and we'll certainly be updating our stakeholders and publics along the way. 
We also recognize uh, that um, there is a need to evolve some uh, elements of the regulatory framework uh, to facilitate innovation and uh, partner with uh, our stakeholders to ensure that we uh, continue to optimize how we uh, evaluate quality. And the new inspection protocol project is an example of uh, this uh, commitment that CEDAR and uh, um, ORA, who is partnering with CEDAR, um, uh, have to um, get to a better way to assess the, the state of quality in manufacturing facilities. And moving away from you know, the box ticking, which is important and is a foundation of, of GMP, to also, uh, in a complementary fashion, um, finding ways to more holistically, systematically um, uh, evaluate the state of quality maturity of a facility um, so that uh, in a way that is more consistent for um, you know, stakeholders, sponsors, and, and so on. As I mentioned earlier, um, the, uh, there is a major push by the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality to uh, facilitate uh, and spur the adoption of uh, new um, technology programs. The pharmaceutical industry, unfortunately, is lagging behind um, some other in industry sectors when it comes to the adoption of, of more modern manufacturing technologies. I'll give the example, for instance, of the auto industry, of the semiconductor industry, who over the decades have really completely transformed themselves. And so we need to get there also when it comes to um, pharmaceuticals. And the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality has put in place the emerging technology programs to study and uh, support and encourage the adoption of uh, modern, more modern pharmaceutical design and manufacturing techniques, including advanced or continuous manufacturing, and, and so on. And uh, as part of this, um, we're also engaging in work to um, review and evaluate the current regulatory framework uh, to uh, determine how we need to evolve that framework to facilitate the adoption of these new uh, technologies. So technology and regulation are very important, but they can only go so far. Um, and uh, the foundation of pharmaceutical qual quality ultimately, even in the 21st century, resides with people and with people's commitment to quality. And uh, the, uh, probably the most important element when it comes to ensuring quality is manufacturers taking ownership for quality. And that ownership and that commitment starts with executive management. And what executive management does to promote support and support the establishment of a quality culture. And so what does it mean to establish a quality culture? Well, management, first and foremost, has to walk the talk. Management has to set the tone. And they, they also have to demo, demonstrate a, 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 the commitment to quality in a tangible way, uh, such as investing in people, such as driving quality by embedding quality in the organizational objectives. Um, uh, supporting the establishment of strong quality systems because strong quality systems in themselves shape a quality culture in a very sort of iterative and continuously reinforcing way. There also has to be a focus and investment. I cannot stress enough the investment aspect in innovation and continuous improvement. And last but not least, there has to be a commitment to move to a performance-based quality management framework that is really aimed at uh, beyond more than passing the next inspection, but really establishing an enduring uh, quality system that continuously improves itself and uh, uh, lays the foundation then for uh, um, minimizing or, or uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the frequency of quality defects. So before I show you the next slide, which has the answer to the challenge question, I'm going to read out the challenge question so that we can make it somewhat of a challenge. So the challenge question is as follows, and I, I hope that there's going to be some hands raised, otherwise I'll pick up someone. Um, theater uses application assessments and inspections as tools to, regulatory, to regulate quality. 
Is it true or false? I need to have the TikTok, TikTok somewhere. Does anyone want to uh, try to answer this? It's true? Anyone disagree? All right. So this is true, in fact. However, these are not the only tools, and that's really important. As I mentioned earlier, particularly coming from industry, there is a tendency to say, you know, quality and FDA are all about the next inspector who shows up at the facility, and it's all about getting our application through the review process. And in fact, as I hope I showed you earlier in the presentation, um, there are many tools that need to be brought to bear uh, to ensure product quality, including ongoing surveillance, research, outreach, technology, and policy. So I'm going to stop here. Thank you for your attention. And I'm going to turn over to Brenda, who will introduce my COPCHA.